as equitous, you know, what, what, what I would like to do is obviously is, is again, restate our strategy, uh, which is, as we've probably been sort of stating this, uh, this statement now, it's been, been in our presentations for the last few years, and we want to really uh, sort of send the statement home again. And it's Equitas basically has ambitions to be a globally relevant um, specialist REIT focusing on the top end of the logistics sector. Um, we have a single-minded focus on this. Uh, it's been there since day one, and, and nothing has veered from that. And if anything, the, 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 the activities of this year have just reinforced this, this statement. And as you know, we operate in two jurisdictions. We operate in the UK and we operate in SA. In the UK, you know, we've, um, we've um, entered the joint venture with the Newlands team, and this has probably been extremely critical to our business with the, the yield compression coming through in that market in terms of valuations and, and, and pricing on, on deal flow of the quality of product that Equitas would like to own, um, we probably wouldn't be very much in the market at the moment. Um, consequence of that is that the Newlands team are, are exceptionally good at identifying land which can be taken through a process into getting the, the correct zoning and then eventually bringing the, the pre-let uh, owner, uh, the pre-let occupier to, to the site uh, and building specific logistics facilities for these occupiers. Um, so we will look to develop um, buildings within the JV, which we will look to retain the ones that meet our investment criteria. The ones that don't, we will be happy to do them and we'll recycle the profit from that into, into the system. Um, the other thing which is very important is that we still are exposed to the market, so we're still very much in the know of what's going on. And if, if acquisition opportunities do arise in the open market, the Newlands relationship does not preclude Equitas from, from engaging in those things, which is, I think, very important as well. In SA, you know, we're still looking to, to develop best in class um, on our, our strategic land holdings. Uh, as, as we've done this in the past year, the, the, the deal with, with ShopRite on the sale and leaseback, we see that as a vehicle of potential opportunity with other other um, major retailers within the South African framework. And, and then obviously, should uh, any meaningful uh, portfolio or single asset opportunities arise that meet our investment criteria, we're very much in the market for those. It certainly has been a very interesting and challenging six months. And we've been very fortunate that our business has showed its resilience and withstood the worsening economic climate. Um, Our portfolio consists of 63 properties with an aggregate value as at 31 August of 16.2 billion Rand. And it's underpinned by impeccable property fundamentals, as shown on the slide. Firstly, our weighted average lease expiry profile is 10 years at the moment. In South Africa, across our portfolio, we've got in-contract annual escalations of 7.8% and 94.6% of our income is derived from A-grade tenants. These property fundamentals are the reason why we were able to withstood the challenging times and it really gives us the platform from which to operate in the years to come. When, when the COVID pandemic broke, it really forced us closer to our tenants because there were uncertain times for everybody. And we tried to, as Andrea indicated, create solutions for those tenants that were the hardest hit by the lockdown. Fortunately, 85% of our tenants remained operational during the lockdown, 85% um, in South Africa and 100% in the UK, but there were those that were very hardly hit by the, the, the measures implemented. And we assisted most of those tenants through cash flow relief by implementing deferred payments for them over a mostly 12-month period. Fortunately, because of the resilience of our portfolio, we collected 99% of our contracted rentals during the six-month period with a 100% collection rate in the UK. Obviously, the COVID pandemic and the lockdown has impacted our tenants across the board. During our discussions with them, most of these businesses has been impacted on an income statement, on profitability. Fortunately, we've not had any tenant failures. And through our discussions, we're very confident that our tenants are, will come through this strongly and that we will 
be able to build on that going forward. Um, interestingly, we also looked at the segments of the, of the, of the industry that we, we cover, and 68% of our tenants um, come from the transport, logistics, FMCG, and food sectors. Um, and and we, obviously those are the sectors that are the most resilient and we're looking to, to build on as we build the business going forward. A lot of you will remember that we started the business with a portfolio of 1 billion rand in June 2014. As you can see from this slide, we've been successful in building this into a 16.2 billion rand portfolio as at 31 August 2020. And with the addition of the three ShopRite warehouses and some of the developments being concluded in the next couple of months, our portfolio will be just shy of, of 20 billion rand. Um, 80% of our portfolio is made up of logistics assets, properties, 10% is, is land holdings, and about 10% are non-core assets and, and two assets that we're holding for sale at the moment. We've coined a new slogan that encapsulates best what we're trying to do at Equitas. Um, it says long, boring and safe. And I think these, the next couple of slides that illustrates our impeccable property fundamentals will show why that somewhat strange slogan is very appropriate for our business. Now, firstly, as you can see on the left-hand side, the, the, the long relates to, to our whale. Um, it's 10 years at the moment, and it will grow to 13.7 years with the introduction of the three ShopRite properties. The boring part is the in-contract escalation across the portfolio of 7.8%. It's the predictability and sustainability and quality of our income and the fact that we continuously meet our guidance targets and we are a transparent business with very little and very few moving parts. The safe part of the slogan relates to the top quality tenants we have with, as I referred earlier, 94.6% of our income being derived from A-grade tenants. And you'll see on the right-hand side of that slide is that our, our whale increased further from from nine and a half years to 10 years over the last six months. And, um, and on, on the left-hand side, there's only three leases that are expiring over the next 12 months, making up less than 24,000 square meters. I'm pleased to advise that we've already engaged with those three tenants and in principle agreed extensions on those leases. I think the fact that we are so specialized in our focus and, and only have a business consisting of 63 buildings, it allows us the opportunity to di engage directly with the tenants and, and really be proactive and, and making sure that we provide the solutions for our tenants that meet their, their objectives. Um, what's important to note, and Andrea and Rian both alluded to this, and at the onset or the beginning of this, these six months, our intention was really to preserve capital, to protect the strength of our balance sheet, and to ensure that we could continue to stick to our, our fundamentals. So in light of those objectives, I think it's quite admirable that we managed to achieve distribution per share of 74.44 cents, which is relatively flat from the prior corresponding period. Our NAV per share is slightly up from the prior corresponding period, but I would say it's reasonably flat. Um, our LTV remains at 29.5%, which is in the midpoint of our 25 to 35% target range and really illustrates that we have further flexibility to implement our development and acquisition pipeline. Our weighted average debt maturity is at 3.5 years, which is slightly down from the prior corresponding period, which was 3.6 years. And at 31 August, we had 1.1 billion Rand of cash and available facilities.